An interesting complexity is emerging in the space sector. Blue Origin recently completed a noteworthy New Shepard flight, but it has raised questions, particularly about the true implications of the title astronaut. At the same time, SpaceX is grappling with the challenges of an unexpected landing near the Bahamas. In Europe, emerging space company RFA has launched a leadership transition. Let's talk more on today's episode of NR Studio. After resuming operations in December 2023, following a September 2022 setback, Blue Origin has significantly accelerated progress on its New Shepard Space Tourism Initiative, particularly around human crew transportation. The company recently launched NS-31, its 31st flight overall, a milestone that marks a remarkable chapter in Blue Origin's history. The mission is particularly noteworthy because for the first time, it is staffed entirely by women. The flight took off from Blue Origin's designated launch facility in West Texas at 8.30 a.m. Central Time, equivalent to 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. In keeping with previous missions, the rocket followed a standard suborbital trajectory carrying the capsule to the apex of space, beyond the Kármán line. During this period, the crew experienced several minutes of weightlessness. After reaching maximum altitude, the rocket booster successfully landed vertically, while the capsule descended gracefully with the aid of parachutes, landing gently in the barren desert landscape. The six women involved in this mission deserve immense recognition for their unmatched courage and unwavering determination. Their passion for engaging in such an endeavor is truly inspiring, and their journey will surely encourage others to explore careers in science and space exploration. However, this mission has reignited a long-running discussion about New Shepard. However, these individuals should be considered astronauts. Although Blue Origin refers to all of its crewed passengers as astronauts, this classification has been a subject of debate for years. Most notably, Sean Duffy, U.S. Secretary of Transportation responded to Blue Origin's social media posts with a statement that clearly outlined its limitations. Citing FAA guidance from the previously active Commercial Spaceflight Astronaut Wing Initiative, he stated, The U.S. commercial space industry is a remarkable initiative that demonstrates American ingenuity and exceptionalism. However, the FAA's latest guidance is clear. Crew members embarking on space missions are required to engage in activities during their flights that are critical to public safety or have significantly improved the safety of human spaceflight. The crew that embarked on this week's autonomous spaceflight with Blue Origin demonstrated courage and luxury. However, one cannot truly claim the title of astronaut. They failed to meet the criteria set forth by the FAA for astronauts. At the heart of the debate over New Shepard lies the question of what tangible outcomes the flight actually achieved. New Shepard climbed to the Kármán line, about 100 kilometers above sea level, widely recognized as the demarcation of space. Despite this, it failed to reach orbital velocity, thus categorizing it as a suborbital spacecraft. The mission lasted just 10 to 11 minutes, during which participants experienced the sensation of weightlessness and enjoyed a glimpse of Earth from the expanse of space. The goal was not rooted in scientific or operational concerns, but rather in the realm of experiential understanding. Opting for a luxury tourist experience over investing in space infrastructure, extended missions, or scientific inquiry. Critics argue that while the individuals who participated in the New Shepard flight undeniably demonstrated courage and pushed the boundaries of exploration, they fell short of the conventional criteria that define an astronaut. In contrast, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft presents a very different paradigm for space exploration, emphasizing substantial missions, comprehensive research, and an enduring human presence in space. The Dragon spacecraft is a full-fledged orbital vehicle that is adept at carrying out complex missions that are critical to advances in human spaceflight and scientific exploration. Dragon spacecraft routinely transport astronauts and cargo to the International Space Station on missions that can last up to six months. These missions facilitate critical research, station maintenance, and support a sustained human presence in orbit. Even private missions, such as those conducted by Axiom Space, are driven by specific objectives, as they prepare astronauts for future private space stations while simultaneously conducting critical scientific research in microgravity environments. Other missions, such as Polaris Dawn, aim to test human performance under the extreme rigors of space, while FRAM-2 is dedicated to conducting biological and environmental research in the context of polar orbit. 
These initiatives underscore that Dragon is not only important to NASA, but also serves as a critical enabler of commercial spaceflight and a foundation for deep space exploration. These missions go beyond mere spaceflight. They are driven by intent, significantly advancing scientific development and improving operational frameworks. In contrast, while New Shepard's suborbital flights are inspiring, they do not meet the same standards for astronaut-level engagement with space. While the passengers demonstrate courage and passion, their contributions to the advancement of space exploration do not match the impactful engagement of Dragon crew members. In short, while Blue Origin's New Shepard has significantly contributed to growing public enthusiasm for space travel, labeling its passengers as astronauts is somewhat misleading. Terms like space tourist, inspiring explorer, or cosmic adventure might be more appropriate. Do you agree with this view? If so, please leave a comment below showing your agreement. Please remember to show your agreement by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. I greatly appreciate your continued support. We are well on our way to 10,000 subscribers, and with your support, we will reach this goal in the near future. Now let's check in on the recent progress related to the landing of a Falcon 9 booster in the Bahamas, a bold and strategic addition to SpaceX's growing recovery network. A classic SpaceX innovation is the deployment of autonomous drone ships to retrieve Falcon 9 first stage boosters over the ocean. This approach has become the foundation of the company's reusability framework, facilitating rapid transitions between launches and expanding the spectrum of viable launch trajectories. To enhance its recovery capabilities, SpaceX recently entered into a new landing partnership with the Bahamas, marking a significant advancement in its Atlantic operations. The first booster recovery under the new agreement occurred on February 18th, coinciding with the deployment of Starlink satellites. The Falcon 9 first stage made a flawless landing on an unmanned ship stationed off the coast of the Bahamas, confirming the potential of the site for future landings. SpaceX commemorated the achievement by announcing at X that our new partnership with the Bahamas will facilitate the Falcon 9's ability to initiate new orbital trajectories. Following the mission, Bahamian government officials expressed optimism about the partnership. It is expected that, subject to regulatory approval, as many as 19 Falcon 9 landings could occur in the region through 2025. The partnership is seen as a win-win situation for both parties, increasing SpaceX's reach while also potentially generating economic and technological benefits for the Bahamas. However, just months after the collaboration began, progress has come to a temporary halt. The Bahamian government has placed additional permit suspensions to facilitate a comprehensive environmental assessment. Latur Roaming, the country's communications director, announced at AGS that no additional permits will be issued until a comprehensive review of the environmental assessment is complete. While officials have not disclosed the reason behind the review, it is plausible that it is related to SpaceX's Starship Flight 8 test flight on March 6th, which disintegrated upon re-entry, resulting in debris that is believed to have fallen across the Bahamas. It is important to recognize that Starship and Falcon 9 are different systems in terms of scale and functionality. As such, the challenges faced in those missions should not be extrapolated to Falcon 9. As of April 1st, Falcon 9 landings in the Bahamas have been suspended, affecting the rocket's standard launch frequency. However, there is optimism that the disruption will not be long-lasting. Falcon 9 has an impressive safety track record, and its initial landing in the Bahamas was smooth. SpaceX has demonstrated accountability in past incidents, most notably the investigation into Starship Flight 7, which concluded that there was no public safety risk involved. This collaboration presents a significant opportunity for growth. For SpaceX, this development offers greater flexibility in orbital launches, while for the Bahamas, it signals greater economic progress and global prominence. If environmental and safety concerns are managed deftly, this collaboration has the potential to set a paradigm for future aerospace alliances. While the hiatus is a setback, it is anticipated to be temporary. Through effective communication and comprehensive evaluation, the resumption and expansion of Falcon 9 landings in the Bahamas could benefit SpaceX and the region, while also driving progress in the global space industry. As we conclude today's update, we turn our focus to Europe, where rocket factory Augsburg, RFA, Germany's leading private space startup, has undergone a significant transition in its leadership. On April 11th, RFA announced that CEO Stefan Therese, 
who had been at the helm since October 2021, would be replaced by Endulis Kalnins. While no explicit reason was given for the change, RFA underlined that the transition was intended to prioritize technical execution and accelerate progress towards launch readiness. Cal Nins has extensive experience in the aerospace sector, currently involved in providing knowledge in aerospace studies at Holschel Bremen, while simultaneously holding the position of managing director at OHP Cosmos. His appointment signals a transition from prioritizing organizational expansion to emphasizing technical execution and operational efficiency, thus underscoring RFA's dedication to achieving orbital success with its RFA-1 rocket. The leadership shift is indicative of a larger trend in the European space sector, where setbacks with Ariane 6 and Vega C have underscored the need for emerging startups like RFA. Kalnin's technical acumen aligns perfectly with the growing demand for strong leadership as Europe looks to rejuvenate its launch capabilities. Jean-Jacques Dordain, chairman of the RFA Supervisory Board and former Director General of the European Space Agency, outlined the company's priorities in a statement. In addressing the tasks ahead, our emphasis is on technical progress and the trajectory towards the launch pad. With a broad range of competencies, Dr. Cal Nins contributes to a highly motivated team, and we are confident that RFA is making significant steps towards its maiden launch attempt, prioritizing access to the launch services market. In contrast, former CEO Torazor has a background outside the space industry, highlighted by executive roles at Google and Deezer. In addition to consulting engagements with McKinsey and Company, his hiring was seen as a calculated and strategic decision. In 2021, Dorden articulated that we intentionally sought out individuals with substantial experience in corporate management outside the space domain to instill new expertise and provide new momentum to RFA's development trajectory. Under Torazor's leadership, RFA initially focused on expanding the organization. However, with the RFA-1 rocket still awaiting its maiden launch, the company's priorities have now shifted to execution. In August 202, RFA suffered a significant setback when a static fire test resulted in the destruction of the rocket's first stage, delaying an anticipated launch at Saxevoort Spaceport that was originally scheduled for that year. Nonetheless, progress continued, and in January 2025, RFA was granted a launch license allowing for up to 10 launches per year. While Terrazor has expressed optimism about launching in Q3 2025, the newly appointed leadership under Cal Nins will ultimately determine whether this timeline remains feasible. This leadership transition reflects an overall trend in the European space sector as setbacks in satellite and rocket launches, coupled with the suspension of Big AC, have presented significant challenges. Startups like RFA are seen as crucial to rejuvenating Europe's launch capabilities. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next one, and thank you for your support.